Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. A compressor is a really important tool in your DAW. The word compress means to make something smaller. Whether you're using GarageBand, Logic, Pro Tools, or FL Studio, they all pretty much work the same way. But let's think about the compressor in GarageBand as an automatic volume knob. When your track gets too loud, the compressor turns it down for you. We use compression because humans are not perfect. Whether I'm hitting a snare drum, playing the bass, or singing a part, I can't sing every single part the exact same volume. I'm not really sure I would want to either. We use compression to help us even it out a little bit. So let's look at a hardware compressor and try and figure out what some of these knobs do. This is an FMR RNC. It's something like 180 bucks, but it's really cool. Here's our threshold knob. We use this to find the tip of the waveform. If we turn it all the way up, the entire waveform is compressed. If we turn it all the way the other direction, no compression happens. Here's our ratio knob. On this compressor, we can go from no compression all the way to 25 to one. I'm gonna set it at four to one. That's a good starting point. This is the attack. By twisting this knob, you can set how quickly the compressor activates and grabs the waveform. This is the release knob. By twisting it, you can set how quickly the compressor lets go of your signal. This is our makeup gain knob. At the top, this bypass switch is really helpful. We can use it to turn the compressor on and off to hear what we're doing and compare. The gain reduction meter at the top of the compressor is one of the most important parts. Here you can see how hard your compressor is working. On this compressor, it goes in two dB increments. This is what no compression looks like. This is what lots of compression looks like. All these lights are going on. Let's take a look at how compression affects a sound wave. These two lines each represent something different. The top line represents 0 dB. If the sound wave goes above this 0 dB line, it will distort. The bottom line represents the threshold. When the sound hits this threshold, the compressor kicks on and starts doing its job. Below the threshold, it will not affect the audio. This blue line represents our sound wave. It's not compressed at all. Notice there's a very loud peak, a quieter peak, and a peak in the middle. This quieter peak in the center is below the threshold. The first ratio we're gonna talk about is a two to one ratio. It's light, subtle compression. Any sound above this threshold will be reduced to about 50% of its size. It only affects the audio that goes above the threshold. This peak below the threshold will not be affected. Our next ratio is four to one. This is a more aggressive ratio. If you look at the green reduced wave, you're gonna see above this threshold, it's about 25% the size of the original wave. The last ratio we're looking at is infinity to one. That means the sound wave can never go above the threshold. If the sound hits this threshold, the peaks are flattened. Engineers like to call this brick wall limiting. The audio hits a brick wall and flattens out. This is the most aggressive type of compression. Notice the difference between the peaks and the valleys with different ratios. The blue uncompressed wave has the biggest difference between the loudest and softest points. And the orange infinity to one ratio has the smallest difference between the loudest and softest part. After we use compression, we use makeup gain. As we add makeup gain, the sound wave gets taller and taller and closer to zero dB. This makes it sound really loud. Notice with the uncompressed file and the less aggressive ratios, you have to be careful how much makeup gain you can add. This orange infinity to one ratio 
allows you to push the gain almost all the way up to zero dB. That means it sounds super loud. So in GarageBand, the compressor looks like this. There's a couple controls in this little panel down here, but most of our controls are up top. I like to run my EQ into the compressor, but some people like to EQ afterward. So here's our compressor. Here's our threshold. This is the point where the compressor grabs the audio. Here's our ratio, our attack, how quickly the compressor grabs the audio, and our makeup gain. Down here, this is our gain reduction. It's not labeled, but I like to think about it as each little light represents 2 dB of reduction. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so on and so forth. So notice in GarageBand, you don't have a release knob. This knob right here, the compressor has an automatic release. That can be great if you're a newbie or it can hold you back if you're more advanced. Let's hear. This is the vocal. You don't speak much to me these days. Now notice my, my attack is right in the middle. This is a medium attack. The fastest attack I can do is zero milliseconds. So the compressor grabs it super fast and, and starts compressing right away. The slowest is 200 milliseconds. So it, it moves a lot slower here. Let's do, put it right in the middle. Generally, when I'm compressing, I like to compress just a couple dB on a source like a vocal. I usually like a slower attack and a more natural release. If I'm really hitting this meter really, really hard and reducing as much as I possibly can, the compression gets really, really obvious. Let's hear that. So the quieter parts get really loud, the louder parts get really squashed. This is only a four to one ratio. If I crank the ratio up, it's really, really working hard. If I hit my attack all the way up, it starts to distort. Not a great sound. I can watch my meters down here to help me. Four to one's a nice starting ratio. I'm gonna back my threshold so the compressor's just hitting a couple of these lights. Now notice, after the compressor, I am running a de-esser. This de-esser in GarageBand has a couple presets. I find it to be kind of counterintuitive sometimes. But this one kind of works well for my voice right here. You just crank this knob up and down to see how much you want. So no suppression. This will give you a list if you move too far. Now, if you're really compressing a vocal aggressively, not only do you have to think about sibilance, using a de-esser, but sometimes you have to think about breaths. If you're hitting this compressor super hard, every breath that your vocalist is going to take in is going to be around the same volume as everything else. In this take, I edited all the breaths out. That's something that I like to do. You don't have to do that. So in this instance, I like to use EQ into the bass. I'm using a 10 to 1 ratio, a slower attack to too. Using our little LEDs down here, we can see how much the bass is being compressed. I'm at a higher ratio, but a bass is going to need more help than most other sources. On 
on this snare sample, the compressor is set at four to one ratio, medium attack, medium release. This is a moderate amount of compression. If I pull the ratio all the way to 25 to one, drop my threshold, it works really, really hard. Now the attack is cranked as fast as possible. Now the release is as fast as possible. You can really hear the sound of the room with a fast release. This is the most extreme compression I can do with this box. As fast attack as possible and as fast release as possible. So a lot of this is going to be trial and error. Put the time in, you're going to get there eventually. Bye now. <laughs>